Hey guys, welcome back to part two of building a straw clay tiny house. And in this video, we're going to focus on how I'm building the stem wall foundation. Now that we have the concrete pad all completed, we're going to raise up the walls on top of a stem wall. And in this case, I'm using brick. So I'm going to show you how I'm doing this brick stem wall. I'm actually doing a dual layer interior and exterior layer of brick and then inside putting some rebar and some bolts and then concreting that in so it's going to be a solid stem wall foundation and I'll integrate it to the concrete pad as well okay a couple notes on the brick work the main reason I'm doing bricks for my stem wall is because I want that look it's more of an aesthetic option you don't have to build with bricks to do a stem wall it can be several different materials um, some kind of masonry material so for me this system works really well because there's an outer and an inner layer of bricks so here's the outer layer next I have to build the inner layer of bricks and then inside I can put my rebar and pour concrete and I don't have to set up wooden forms pour the concrete and tear the forms off and scrap that wood so the brick acts as my form as well it gives me that look that I want so I think it's a great system it's the first time I'm trying it on an actual building I think it's gonna work really well another note on brickwork this video is not gonna show you the ins and outs of how to lay brick there's much better videos on YouTube demonstrating how to do that um, I recommend checking those out if you want to learn this skill it's not that hard to pick up so you could learn it just by practicing and watching YouTube videos. But um, let's go inside and I'll show you kind of what I'm doing from the inside and the next steps to take here. Now the next step I need to take before I build the next four corners up, you always start with the corners when doing a brick building and then you infill the inner portions after that. What I need to do first though before I lay those bricks is I need to come in here and actually drill holes into the concrete pad about three inches. Then I'm going to stick vertical rebar in that hole sticking up out of the hole against this inner wall. Um, so there's going to be actually a two inch gap here when that inner wall is created back here so that's where the rebar is going so I'm going to drill the holes lay the rebar in first before I do this inner layer of bricks because that's going to get really tight in there um, and what I'm going to do is put those vertical rebars and then tie horizontal rebars and then get to building the brick and then after that pour the concrete in the middle so I gotta go get some rebar get that cut and then start drilling these holes So you might be wondering what tools I use there to drill the hole and put the epoxy in. This is my rotary hammer drill, Milwaukee brand. This is a really good one. Um, I've got a carbide tipped concrete drill bit on here. And uh, I marked it with a piece of tape to know the depth three inches down. In my case, only because my slab is only five and a half inches thick, I only went three inches down. And then once I cleaned out the hole of all the dust, I put this anchoring epoxy in. This is Quick Crete brand. And this stuff worked really well. 
it's uh, when you open it up you actually see it's like half the bottle is part A and half the bottle is part B and this little nozzle you put on the end here when you squeeze it out it actually combines the two sides and mixes them up inside the nozzle head and then uh, shoots it out so this stuff worked really well um, my rebar is already starting to hold and I'm going to let it sit overnight and then come back and attach the horizontal rebars. Okay, so since the last video, I've completed a couple more steps. So down here, if you want to kind of zoom in on that, you can see I've got all the rebar placed, the J bolts placed. So again, we had the epoxied vertical rebars that I attached the horizontal rebars. And then the J bolts I placed every two feet. And the J bolts are just lightly wired in here, but I have them set at the right height with this uh, piece of 2x4. These will come out at the end, but they're keeping that J bolt at the right level. So when we pour the concrete in the middle, that J bolt's going to be secured in there at the right height. Because at the end, I'm going to put a, a 2x10 sill plate running the whole span of the top of the wall. And uh, it's going to be the same thickness as this 2x4. So I've also completed all the four interior corners. I've used a white mortar for the interior. And uh, today I need to start filling in between the corners and completing the brickwork. Once the brickwork's done, I'm going to fill in the middle with concrete and uh, apply this sill plate. And then the foundation should be complete from there. The brickwork is now done and I filled in all the concrete in the middle. So technically at this point the foundation is completed. I'm just going to show you um, its completed state here real quick. So you'll see the interior layer of bricks is all completed. We filled in concrete in the middle. So all that rebar is now encased in concrete. All the J-bolts are embedded in the concrete at the correct height. So now the next thing I'm going to do is install the sill plate that sits on top of the foundation and then frame up the walls from there. So that sill plate will fit exactly where it needs to go underneath the uh, nut and bolt on these J-bolts and it will really attach it tightly onto the foundation. So, um, for example, if you're in a, let's say you're in a tornado zone and that wind is lifting the roof and your wall system up, having it attached firmly to your foundation with several J-bolts means it's going to have to either rip the entire framing off your foundation or it's going to have to rip your foundation out as well. So you want to have a really strong integration between your wooden framing and your masonry foundation. Um, that's where these J-bolts really come into play. So having a high foundation stem wall has a lot of benefits for preserving your building, especially if you have a building using a wall system such as cob straw bale, adobe, rammed earth, or straw clay, or hempcrete even. Any kind of wall system that would be damaged by uh, moisture. The high stem wall is going to preserve that wall system better by protecting it from water splashback, or rainfall splashback, or water runoff along the ground. It's going to raise your wall system up well off ground level and keep it a lot drier. So having a high foundation stem wall is a great way to go. It also adds that little aesthetic appeal like in this case with the brick. You don't have to always have this high stem wall but I do recommend it for any kind of earth based or straw based wall system just to keep it well raised off the ground. So I hope you guys got some value out of this video and um, Hope you understand a little bit better how to make a stem wall on your foundation 
And if you have questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And thanks for watching.